Guys, it's time to end the violence and the madness, the strife between iOS and Android. Why fight? I mean, why choose a side when you can have both? Let's literally combine these into one device. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take an iPhone, we're going to take an Android, and we're going to literally put them together. This will fix all of the issues. So in this video, I wanted to show you guys the ultimate solution to those that just can't decide between Android and iOS. Why decide when you can have both? So here it is. No, yes, no, shh, but yes. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. So here it is. Pop your iPhone in and you got yourself the newest and greatest phone. Sweet. Ooh, man, this is fancy. I've heard this before, I'm not sure from where, but China Mobile has released this new Android case. It's quite awesome. You get every feature from an Android that you could ever want on your iPhone. Okay. I fooled you guys, didn't I? Anyways, here's a real one. Let's take a look at real Android running on a case on iPhone for the people that just can't decide. This one actually made news yesterday. And, you know, I thought, hey, let me show you guys what that concept would be like. So uh, let's dig in. All right. I've actually been wanting to show you guys this for a while. Now it's just been relevant to talk about it. All these boxes are always so shady. All right, so let's see what we got here. So here it is, super cool slim case that runs a version of Android on your iPhone. It looks very nice, like an Apple box here. So excited to see how it runs. I mean, back in the day, you literally had to install Android on an iPhone software-wise, and it was possible. I actually made a video about it a while ago. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to dual boot Android 2.2.1, which is Froyo, on your iPhone 2G or 3G. You have Android on your iPhone, and this is the Froyo version. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to go find someone that uses an Android device and brag to them how my iPhone can run their OS, but theirs can't do vice versa. The home menu button is the power button, and the menu button is this button right here. And this is the phone button, and to turn it off, you just tap both of them at the same time and man the memories this brings back so is this anywhere near as good as that because that was pretty crappy it was slow and responsive your iphone got uh heated i mean near melting temperature so let's see the 2017 edition or 2016 late edition of android on an iphone come on oh man this thing is packed in tightly Oh, come on. All right. Oh, and there it is. So, me suit. That is surprisingly slim. I did not expect it to be this slim. So, how does it work? All right, so I just wanted to see what else it comes with. Probably a cable to charge it with. Yep, so it comes with a micro USB to lightning adapter in there. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge this thing and get the app installed on my iPhone. So I couldn't understand a word of this. I had to download a QR app reader just to uh, download the app because I couldn't find it in the app store. So let's hope this will work here. Oh my goodness, you guys have no idea the trials I just went through just to install this app. It's ridiculous. I had to go and scour the internet for a link because the uh, included QR code didn't load anything, didn't work, so had to go translate Chinese websites just to download the app to run this. But it's working, so hopefully I'll have it up and running soon. All right, so finally the newest version of their app for the Mi Suit. This time it's in English, so that's good. Something legible. All right, allow, allow. Firstborn signature, allow, okay, yep. Mm -hmm, man, how many of these do you need? Finally, oh my goodness. It's like they try to make this as difficult as possible to install, but I get it. You know, we're not supposed to even have this in America. This is Chinese markets only. Anyways, so jumping into the software, I do have Android running on an iPhone. Well, this is quite a way to run it, but it is seriously running on an iPhone display. This is sort of like an emulation, but a real hardware built into this case. So I actually do have to uh, translate just in order to change the uh, 
language because I can't read anything right now. So I'm going to attempt to do that. System management. Oh, so you do have the full Android settings in here. Language, thank you. English, oh my goodness, finally. So the battery died. I had to go ahead and get it charged up and now we can continue. Um, I found out one very glaring flaw with this thing before even getting into it and it's a big one. So if the battery dies on this thing, it refuses to charge this one. There's some sort of glitch that goes on for whatever reason uh, because it's a manual setting you have to enable for it to charge this one. So if your iPhone dies and you want to charge it through this guy, no go. You got to take it off and charge it separately. One very, very big design flaw. I don't know why that is. Plus the fact that this is a separate little adapter in here is really annoying because you got to keep uh, pulling it out and placing it back in. Uh, it's super, super annoying. Anyways, so let's say everything is going perfectly. It's a great idea. Let's see how they executed it. You run the app and then you go ahead and slide this in here. And if you're lucky, it will connect. Sometimes it doesn't. It's quite annoying how unstable it is. I'm gonna try and turn that on. And sometimes you gotta pull it out, put it back in. It takes a while, man. It's just stability wise, it's not there. And there you go. So you have your Android. So the update just installed. It's looking a little bit better now. And it's a fully functioning Android running on your device. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what it is. I'm actually kind of curious here in settings. So it's Android 5.1 Lollipop, huh? So we click on it, we get our little secret thing, but that's a bit old, I'm surprised. At least put Android 6.0 on this thing. We've got our model number. So this is its very own phone. The only flaw is you cannot install any apps of your own. So from the Play Store, you can't download anything like that. It's very, very limited what you can do with this thing. You know, that begs the question, what's the point of it? So um, it's actually a very, very good Android phone though, just as a standalone mini device. If you wanted something as a backup, uh, not even to power the iPhone, just on its own, it's kind of cool. The surprising thing to me is how responsive it is. I mean, I thought this thing would be buggy and slow. I just saw some promos of this thing and it didn't look very responsive whatsoever, but here it's actually running quite good. So this is actually Android running, but you still have iOS running in the background. You can get your own prompts like this here. That's uh, kind of funny. Now this case has its own Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules, so it's not using the iPhones. You literally have to go and set up Wi-Fi once again inside of here in Bluetooth, it's its own individual chip, which I thought was uh, pretty neat. So you're using that through here. Of course, you can get a lock screen as well. You can do the standard Android locks. And taking a look at the camera application, I'm actually kind of curious, how does it manage this? It's its own app, that is so neat. So, okay, there we go. So you got photos, videos, can we change any of these settings in here? So basically you grant this app permission and it uses your own stock camera, which I thought was kind of a neat touch. Oh, I'm gonna need to get used to not clicking the home button. You have to use these buttons here. This right here is a sort of like a quick widget. The only thing I don't like about this is you pay for this product and you still get a whole bunch of spam everywhere. Like it's all in Chinese, you can't even understand it. There's a bunch of widgets you don't really care for, like this hanging here um, and you get this here. I don't know. It's just full of spam. It's not a stock version of Android, which kind of sucks. It would have made it much better. Someone actually managed to root this thing though on the forums. So that way they installed Play Store in their own apps. And it's a very, very slow hardware. Don't get me wrong. You're not gonna be able to do any intense gaming on it, but you can root it and get your own stuff on here. So. It's basically an Android phone, very, very watered down, not much you can do, but it's essentially there. And it's Android running on an iPhone, which is the craziest part. So the reason for me to even make this video, guys, was to show you guys uh, kind of what's available right now for this solution, getting Android on iPhone, because these guys, uh, for the iCase case that I'm gonna show you guys here very, very soon, I got in contact with them, they're sending me one of those cases, it's actually a fully fledged Android phone running on the back of your phone with a separate display. So these are pretty much two competitors of running Android on iPhone. And I'm hoping that one will be much better because this one is a bit limited. I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering why I would need this, to be honest. I have iOS on my phone. Why do I need to run Android on it as well um, if I can't even install my own applications that I wanted to? That's my only thing. But there are a couple cool things you know, above and beyond. So what you can do is you can actually offload storage from um, your iPhone onto here. So there's about 12 gigs. You can go ahead and select some photos. Man, back from the Pokemon Go days here. 
copy to me suit and it'll take those and copy them instantly. So now you've offloaded some storage. You can delete those off of your iPhone until you need them again. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can check your battery in here and the me suit for whatever reason has some issues with the battery. Like it'll die suddenly, you know, it'll be like a 50% and then it'll say it's at zero. I'm not sure what that's about. You know, if you're buying one of these for $200, the software support isn't there. So you're not going to be able to get updates consistently. Although I was surprised to even find an update for this thing. It's not even that stable. I don't know. It's hard to recommend this product, but it's cool. It's like a gimmick going up to your friends and saying, hey, I got Android on my iPhone. Let me see you do it with iOS. I think it would be near impossible to port iOS 10 to a case because first of all, licensing and all that crap. So there's no way that would happen. It's a cool concept. You know, it's actually really cool to see this working. The question is, why should you do it? The case that I'm going to review in a few days here. Wow, this thing is jam packed full of features. It's actually quite cool. This thing is a burdensome, you know, emulator almost not an emulator. It's running its own Android hardware, but it's hard to do. It's hard to use. Why do you need it? It's not that stable. The support for it has been dropped, so it's hard for me to recommend this, but you know, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed taking a look at this, uh, what Android would be like on iOS. Peace.